When we are talking about refractive lens exchange, how important is the option for same-day bilateral procedures? In this episode of OcuTalk, ophthalmologist Rex Hamilton talks to us about the benefits, side effects, and the actual surgical process of same-day bilateral RLE. Hello and welcome to Aki Talk. Today we're going to be having a conversation with ophthalmologist Rex Hamilton. Dr. Hamilton, thank you for joining us today. Absolute pleasure. I'm looking forward to the conversation. To get us started, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and your specialty? Okay, so um, I did my you know my residency training at, at UCLA at Stein Eye Institute. I then did a fellowship um, in cornea and refractive surgery for a year, and then I came back and was on faculty at Stein Eye and ran the refractive surgery um, center for about 15 years, um, training residents and fellows, and of course, taking care of a lot of patients. And then in 2020, I, I opened my own practice uh, in Beverly Hills so I could really kind of focus on, you know, patient-centered care, customized options, and, and really, you know, a, sort of a concierge level uh, service in terms of refractive surgery. So. It, the greatest thing is that, you know, the technology just continues to move forward. And, you know, it, it's so great to stay on the cutting edge and just seeing what we can do for patients and, and you know, in a wider range as the years go by. So today we were hoping you could discuss same day bilateral refractive lens exchange with us. So to get us started, can you tell our audience what that is exactly? OK, so uh, let's let's take the bilateral part first. So when we do surgery, obviously you know, we have two eyes. And, and so, you know, in certain situations, we operate on both eyes on the same day. Um, so for something like LASIK, where we're correcting vision, so you don't have to wear glasses. Traditionally, that's been done bilateral same day for the last 20 years. When we're talking about refractive lens exchange, we're talking about replacing the lens that's inside the eye, uh, very much like cataract surgery. And traditionally, cataract surgery has been done just one eye at a time, uh, the second eye usually being done a week to two weeks later. And we, you know, the, traditionally that was because of risk for infection, um, concern over maybe an outcome if, the, if there was a complication or something like that. The technology has gotten so good, the surgeries are so fast, there's so small, such a small risk of infection that now, you know, we we are doing some of these surgeries, uh, both eyes on the same day. And so the really nice thing about that is folks are familiar with LASIK and they're familiar with the fact that you do both eyes the same day, the recovery is really fast. You know, the next day I see really well. Well, refractive lens exchange is actually very similar in terms of the recovery. And so we can do the surgeries quickly. The vision the next day is excellent. And so, so folks are not thinking, oh, wow, this is such a bigger surgery and higher risk. It's very, very similar now in terms of risk profile. So it's, it's something that is, I'm going to say, a little cutting edge in the U.S. Outside the U.S., there are countries that have been doing it for years. Uh, so that, that's sort of the concept. So who, who makes an ideal candidate for this type of procedure? Well, you know, everybody that comes in to see me pretty much says they want LASIK. Right, because that's what they know. They know the term LASIK, right? They Google it. They have friends who have had it done. And so LASIK is really awesome for somebody who's 20, 30 years old, wearing minus three, minus four contact lenses or glasses, wants to get out of that, you know, needing that. So, but if somebody comes in and they're 50 and, you know, they're having to wear reading glasses and they never wore glasses before, it's not a great LASIK candidate because the reason they're in my office is because the lens inside their eye is not functioning as well as it used to. And LASIK doesn't address that. So the, the ideal candidates are folks that are probably over the age of about 45 that are having trouble with, you know, range of vision. You know, say they're wearing their glasses for distance and they look at their cell phone and they have to take their glasses off to see that. 
Or, as I mentioned earlier, somebody who's never worn glasses and now has to wear readers. And, and that profile, usually 45 to 50 and older, are the folks that are really great candidates for refractive lens exchange. So the unique benefit of the bilateral same-day version of RLE is that you're getting them both done at the same time. Are there any patients who are not candidates for doing it same day that where they do still have to come in and do multiple procedures? Great question. There are certain situations where I might decide, let me take a step back. There are different options in terms of the lens implants. We we have we can get into that, but you know, not not every patient gets exactly the same type of a lens. So there might be a situation where um, I want to do one eye to see how they do with a certain type of a lens implant before we make a decision on the second eye. Or there are patients that might see very well in one eye and not so well in the other eye. Maybe we want to do just the one eye. But I would say that's a, a pretty significant minority. Most patients would do best and would have the fastest recovery if we did both eyes the same day. So how do you determine what type of lens a patient gets? Like, let's talk a little bit more about the different lenses then. Okay. So just to keep it simple, I, I tell my patients there's essentially two types of lenses. Um, there are lenses that are multifocal, or, or they can be called extended depth of focus, which provide a wide range of vision in each individual eye. So, the, you know, when we talk about distance vision, driving, intermediate vision, kind of computer and near vision cell phone, right? And of course, everybody wants all three of those ranges, of course, right? I mean, that's what you'd like. Uh, so multifocal lenses in general can provide those ranges. However, not every patient's a candidate for a multifocal lens. Let's say someone had radial keratotomy or they had a big LASIK done 20 years ago. The optics of their cornea, which is the window on the front of the eye, may not be compatible with a multifocal lens. So in that setting, we offer a lens called the light adjustable lens, which is a lens that has a narrower range. However, once it's in the eye and it's healed, I can actually adjust the power of that lens with a simple procedure in the office using light. So we don't have to do another surgery. So that's a very customizable type of a lens, and, and that's appropriate for folks that have had previous surgery or may have some other issue with their eye. So what does the diagnostic process look like? Like if patient's coming in, they might be interested in LASIK, they don't know. What does the diagnostic process look like to get to the point where you determine that RLE is what you're, what you're going to move forward with? Yeah, it's a great question. So the, the first point is, you know, what is the prescription? What are they wearing? And what is their age? And literally from those two parameters, I can usually decide which way I want to go. We should also add in, have they had previous surgery, right? So those three things, and I have a good idea. So I can do a virtual consultation with someone. And I love when they show up and they're wearing their glasses because I literally can tell by looking at their glasses what their prescription is roughly. And then I have to ask the impolite question about their age. Have you had previous surgery? And then we can have a discussion, right? Now, when it comes to the fine details, let's say I've told somebody, oh, you're 50, you'd be a great candidate for multifocal lens. They have to then come in for an in-person consultation where we want to assess the health of the entire eye. We want to look at the shape of the cornea. We want to look at their retina, the film in the camera, make sure that's healthy. We want to make sure they don't have glaucoma, diabetic issues. So, you know, we're going to do a full comprehensive exam, obviously, before we commit to moving forward with the procedure. So then once you've decided to do the procedure, you've made that commitment, what does the pre-surgical process for the patient look like? So there are specific measurements, we call it biometry, that allow us to determine what the lens power should be for that patient. And that requires some sophisticated diagnostic testing. And then they meet with the counselor, talks about the process, goes through the, the, the post-op regimen, um, you know, talks about scheduling and costs. Uh, and then the next time we see the patient would be at, at surgery. So then what does that look like? What can you walk us through the surgical procedure itself? I would love to. And, and this is another area that's kind of similar to bilateral same day that I want to talk about, and that has to do with anesthesia. So traditionally, you know, when we do intraocular surgery, like cataract surgery, we're, we have IV sedation, where we're 
placing an IV so that the anesthesiologist or CRNA can control the level of sedation, you know, control pain. We have found over the years that topical numbing drops and oral sedation with something like Valium or Xanax works very, very well for cataract surgery or refractive lens exchange because it's a very short procedure. There's a little bit of pressure on the eye. There's nothing sharp. The patient isn't feeling anything sharp. Patients are, of course, anxious, right? So that's the main issue. It's not really about pain control. The topical drops that we use during the surgery control that. So if we can get the patient relaxed with a pill, it's so much easier for them. There's not a long post-op recovery period. They feel really, really good and kind of like normal within an hour or two after the surgery. So we have found that along with bilateral same day surgery, using oral sedation is also just facilitates the process for the patient. So if we're talking about that setting, the patient comes in, they get their Xanax, they have to be dilated. That takes about 20 minutes. The surgery on each eye takes about 10 minutes per eye. And then they're hanging out for maybe 15 to 20 minutes afterwards. So we're looking at, you know, hour and a half, kind of hour and a half to two hours total that they're in the facility and then they're done and they're seeing out of the eye immediately. That's amazing. <laughs> so what is the post-surgical recovery period like? Obviously, they, they're in and out of the office. They get to go home right away. But what is the actual recovery period? So they're on some eye drops for about three weeks or so, three to four weeks. And that is initially an antibiotic drop, you know, is important for preventing infection. Um, and then there's also two anti-inflammatory drops that we want to control inflammation in the eye. And we actually provide all of those in one, one bottle. It's a compounded uh, pharmaceutical that it makes it very easy for the patient. Uh, we do have some restrictions on activities. Uh, no water in the eye for a week. Showering is fine. Keep the eye closed. We don't want to splash water in the open eye for a week. Um, no bending over with the head past the waist for a week. And I also ask patients, no impact. So jumping, um, you know, anything that aerobics that involves impact, we want to hold off for a week. They can get on a stationary bike. You know, they can walk on the treadmill, those kinds of things right away. Um, they also wear some shields over the eye for the first week just so they don't inadvertently bump the eye um, when they're sleeping. Those, that's really it. Well, that's not too bad. <laughs> Are there any um, complications or side effects that patients should be aware of before choosing to do RLE? Right. So every surgery has a risk of infection. <laughs> the risk of infection is very, very low in the setting of this type of surgery, probably one in 5,000. I've been doing intraocular surgery for 23 years. I've never had a single patient that's lost vision from an infection. So, you know, that's 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 a theoretical risk, right? What's more common, it has to do with the lens power. So we have to figure out the right lens power for each individual eye. And I'm pretty good at it. I've been doing it for 23 years, but everybody heals a little differently. So there's no guarantee we hit that power exactly right in every single eye. If it's slightly off, the patient may not even be bothered by it. Maybe they like the fact that they have a little bit more near vision than we thought they were going to have. And the distance vision is a little soft. So if the patient is bothered, then we actually do what's called an intraocular lens exchange, where we go back and we switch the lens to a different power. You familiar with the term Monday morning quarterbacking? You know what the score is on Monday after Sunday football game, right? So it's similar to that. I know where that patient ended up post-operatively because I measured it. You know, I wanted a zero. They ended up minus a half. Okay, now I know how to change the lens power to get that spot on. them. So uh, lens exchange is, is a very you know straightforward procedure to do. There's probably about a 2% chance that we need to do that. Um, so I would say that's sort of the most common issue. Separate from that, we have what I would call side effects, okay? So these multifocal lenses are amazing and they give you a great range from cell phone all the way out to the distance without glasses. They do that by using something called diffractive optics. And so if you look at the lens and I can, can kind of show you one, um, they have rings on there. And so I show that to the patient and I say, 
you know, once this is in your eye, you're going to notice at night that there are some halos around lights, you know, street light, a headlight, and it's going to be kind of surprising the first day because in an instant I changed what your brain is used to. But over time, the brain is very adaptive and, and it sort of stops noticing those things, right? So I'll, I'll look I'll look at the patient and, and you know, maybe they have a, a bracelet on or a watch or earrings and I'll say, you know, you've got earrings in the watch, but you don't feel them until I mention it, right? The same thing with the rings. Your brain just says, I don't care so much. So that's 100% of patients that get a multifocal lens are going to see that. Um, but it goes away and it becomes less of an issue over time. Uh, the, the lens that I'm using right now, the clinical trial, um, they ask all the patients at one month after surgery, are you still severely bothered by the halos? 3% of patients said yes at one month. So 97% said it's not a big deal. So it is something that, 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 that the brain adapts to. That makes perfect sense, actually. So I guess to circle back then, since we talked about the side effects, um, for our audience watching, uh, if we could highlight the very unique benefits of the same day bilateral procedure versus other procedures, just to sort of recap on that, that would be wonderful. Right. So the, the same day bilateral concept gets the patient through in one day, one, one encounter in the surgery room, we're done. The other aspect that is a big benefit has to do with the adaptation we just spoke of. So imagine I have a pretty big prescription, right? Like let's say I'm minus eight or I'm plus three. I do one eye. Now I have one eye that's perfect. The other eye that is way off, way off. Balance is off. I don't feel comfortable driving. We have to wait a few weeks to do the second eye. Also, even if the prescription is very low and I do one eye, now I have the rings at night in one eye and I don't have them on the other eye. And your brain likes what it's used to, right? So I like this one we haven't done yet. What's going on over here, right? And then you have patients that are like, hmm, I'm going to wait for this to get better before I do this one, right? So it's, 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 it's really kind of, uh, it's detrimental right, for the patient to have to go through that. So that is one of the biggest benefits of doing bilateral same-day surgery when we use multifocal lenses is that neural adaptation, as we call it, happens faster. Well, thank you very much, doctor. That was very helpful. Is there anything else you would like to tell our audience today? Um, well, I think, you know, our biggest issue with refractive lens exchange in general is patient awareness. And so I, I would encourage folks to, to learn about it online. Um, we ha I have two websites, uh, you know, Rex Hamilton MD and also Hamilton RLE. Uh, the Hamilton RLE is specifically dedicated to refractive lens exchange. So I think you know, educating the public about this, you know, sort of life-changing procedure is, is, is our biggest challenge. Um, I wish it was like LASIK where everybody knew what the term meant. Uh, it would make things a lot easier. We would be able to reach a lot more patients. So I think just educating yourself, if you're 45 and older, about how refractive lens exchange makes more sense than LASIK is probably it's probably the most important aspect. Well, thank you very much, doctor. This has been a really wonderful conversation. We appreciate you joining us today. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for the opportunity.